Tonight on the MTN News. Hot potential. Frankly, it's a very unregulated industry, even if it seems somewhat regulated just because there's a tax. But in many ways, it's a very dangerous industry. Marijuana may be legal in Montana, but another battle may be brewing in the legislature over how it's marketed. Plus, a sassy Billings business owner setting herself apart. We'll take you out and about to a restaurant not only serving great food, but a side of culture. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. Of course, the 68th session of the Montana legislature has reached its midway point, and that means most of those bills still in committee don't have a chance of passing this session. Well, one bill that did just pass the House is HB 351. The legislation has the attention of Montana's marijuana dispensaries because it would further restrict where and how pot can be advertised in the state. MTN's Kelsey Marison takes a closer look. Recreational marijuana has been legal in Montana for more than a year now, but the battle over pot continues at the state capitol, specifically how it's advertised and marketed. We card here, the stuff is tested, it's regulated. Marijuana means big money here in Montana. From one end of the state to the other, business is booming and has been ever since the legislature made it legal. Montana had $300 million in cannabis sales this year, in the first year with 58 million generated in tax revenue. But the fight over legal weed continues. We would like to severely restrict if not eliminate the recreational sales. Kevin Sabet is a former drug policy advisor to several presidents. He's now the president and CEO of Smart Approaches to Marijuana, or SAM. We'd like to see the commercialization of marijuana rolled back. The sales and the transport and the distribution in the commercial way that we see now, I think deserves a major correction and needs to be rolled back. The organization is lobbying at the state capitol to roll back regulations on recreational marijuana. Several bills before lawmakers would do just that. House Bill 351, for example, would ban all advertising of marijuana. We think that right now, um, a lot of the American public are underestimating the effects of today's very highly potent marijuana. It's already the people's choice. Nobody is forced to come into here or any of these establishments, and it shouldn't be compared to cigarettes or big tobacco. Jason Smith co-owns Montana Advanced Caregivers, a local chain of Yellowstone County dispensaries. He says Montanans have already sounded off on marijuana and doesn't appreciate out-of-staters trying to influence Montana politics. So you have an out-of-stater trying to circumvent the will of the voters, pose their own moralities and personal beliefs or personal agendas on Montanans. Well, this isn't Montucky. No votes are expected on any marijuana legislation right now, but with groups rallying on both sides, it's clear this is still a hot topic in the treasure state. We don't know what the long-term damage will be. We know the short-term to medium-term is not good. The people voted for recreational marijuana in Montana and safe access to these products. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. A multi-day police search is over as a man suspected in the murder of a Billings woman this week is now behind bars. Officers with the Billings Police Department Street Crimes Unit arrested Terrell Spotted Wolf last night. He's currently in jail and expected to be charged with deliberate homicide and the death of 48-year-old Susan LaForge at a home on 12th Street in Billings. It's the third homicide in Billings this year. Park County authorities are searching for answers tonight surrounding the death of a Livingston teacher. Deputies say 55-year-old Katherine Sorensen was accidentally run over by a vehicle on Sunday on Divide Creek Road. She passed away in the hospital. Sorensen taught fourth grade and pre-K to eighth grade music at St. Mary Catholic School. Well, yesterday, authorities interviewed a woman who stopped along the road to help Sorensen into a vehicle and then to the hospital. They don't believe this person was involved other than just to stop and help. And the Park County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with information on this accident to contact them. And there's the number you see right there on your screen. Eight months after the historic June floods, the main highway to the Sabanye Stillwater Mine still hasn't been repaired. But tonight, a big step toward fixing that highway. Three companies have formally submitted bids for the road repair project, and a contract could be awarded as early as next week. That work is expected to happen this summer and be completed sometime in August. 
Not only does that highway provide access to the mine, it's also the only way to access the popular Woodbine Campground and several popular hiking trails in the Custer Gallatin National Forest. Before repairs to the highway can be made, work will need to be done restoring the Stillwater River Channel. Great picture here from Joe out near Livingston. Uh, lots of colors there through the moon, through the clouds uh, earlier this week. Uh, temperatures this morning, chilly across the area, teens to some low 20s. We had 30 here uh, in Billings, 26 in Livingston. The winds kept things up a little bit for temperature, but we do have some changes in store. We'll talk about later in the show, some things you need to know. Tomorrow is really the last nice day for quite a while, probably a week or 10 days. Falling temperatures and snow coming in on Sunday. We'll give you the details on that. And then the period from Monday and after that looks colder and periods of snow. We'll give you some of those details later in the show. Those high temperatures next week, 10 to 15 degrees below average. Come back for more later in the show. The city of Billings is becoming more diverse. And that diversity is being celebrated by the mayor tonight. Our David Jay is here with details and a closer look at how the makeup of Billings population has changed over the years. The second annual Mayor's World Languages Dinner has doubled in size with 320 people in 45 languages. While those numbers aren't anything official, there are some statistics that show more of an international flair to Billings. The flags go up to celebrate the people and their cultures that have come to Billings. I kept running into people who were not from the United States here in Billings, which is the most uh, ethnically and linguistically diverse city by far of any city in Montana. U.S. Census numbers show Billings is becoming more diverse, while 87% of Billings is white. Billings' American Indian population has grown 13% in 10 years. The African American population is up 25%. Billings' Asian Pacific Islanders population has also increased by 42 percent. Mayor Bill Cole says Billings has also seen more people whose first language is not English. You have a sense of belonging when you also have a group of Spanish speakers. It doesn't matter where they're from. Maggie Arbuckle is from Bolivia. She says it's been important for her to connect with other Spanish-speaking people, people like Luli Borla. We share traditions and we share Things that we, you know, our language, our food. Borla is from Venezuela and has called Montana home for 21 years. It's always nice to connect with the people that are from other countries and understand your culture. I love to see different people. And for the mayor, that's what Friday night's dinner is all about celebrating what makes Billings distinct and sharing the commonalities. Virtually everybody here is an American, virtually everybody here is a Montana, and almost everybody is from Billings, Montana, and this is home. In Billings, David J. MTN News. One black business owner in Billings is certainly making a name for herself when it comes to the city's restaurant scene. She is serving up a side of culture and sass along with food you rarely find in this part of the country. Augusta McDonald shows us what's on the menu at Sassy Biscuit in tonight's Out and About. I think that's what it makes it sassy, is that it's like home cooked. What are like the signature dishes? Like what do people order over and forget? It would be like the cobbler, the sojourner, the julia, the vinny, and the kitchen sink. There's a lot of favorites here. And then on the vinny, how would you like your eggs? The drop biscuits are a foundation of their menu. The fast casual model is a part of the experience. You order at the counter and they take care of the rest. So pretty. Yeah, it really kicks it up a notch. It gives it like a different flavor palette. What makes it sassy? A military spouse who lived all over the country brought the best of her experiences to Billings five years ago. My husband uh, is in the Marine Corps and was stationed here. It's a place like none other because of the unique chef that envisioned and encompasses just what makes it sassy. For me, food is what connects everyone because um, number one, if you look at the color of my skin, um, I'm very unique here in Billings, right? Um, not a ton of people when we first came here even knew what half I don't want to say half our cuisine was, but like collard greens and grits. No one understood that or knew, knew what it was. And, you know, even the flavor profiles that we use, very different. Order up. The restaurant tells her story, leaving nothing out. A West Coast brunch aspect from the time her husband was stationed in San Diego 
The clock set to important times in her life, an image that's been a part of her family for years. It's like I want it to be this place where it brings people together. It was like, come eat at the Johnsons. I wanted you to feel like you were in my home eating and being able to experience what, what my black experience was like. So sassy to me is exactly who I am. So I am absolutely one of the sassiest people you will ever meet <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just, it just represents me and I hope that through this experience that people can begin to open up their eyes and, and realize that just because you know, I'm different from you and you're different from me, that doesn't mean that we can't come together. That's what makes it sassy. In Billings, Augusta McDonald, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN News at 530, kids and families in crisis. It's a big problem here in Montana. I visit one organization that is helping provide hope for thousands of them. And later in sports, the stakes continue to grow as high school basketball teams try to earn spots at state. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. It is no secret that life is a challenge for many of Montana's children. Demand for mental and behavioral services have soared in recent years. Now, I spent some time at Youth Dynamics this week, an organization helping provide hope and healing for thousands of kids and their families in Montana. And like many nonprofits, they're also facing some challenges of their own. Why is it so, why was it so far back? Ooh, there you go. <laughs> On the day I met her, seven-year-old Felicity was seven. full of laughter, but life hasn't always been this happy for her or her family. My son has severe anxiety and severe ADHD. My daughter has severe anxiety and PTSD from past situations before YDI got involved. Cynthia Lund says when they were referred to Youth Dynamics about a year and a half ago by Child Protective Services, the family was in crisis. Really helped our family become a, you know, better and have a more togetherness and uh, be able to relate to each other without having, you know, angry outbursts and fighting and having qualms. Any kind of disruption in a child's development is, is difficult. Um, sometimes that uh, comes from the result of a death in the family, a divorce, um, out, drug and alcoholism. Those are really challenging uh, situations for kids. We started in 1981. Dennis Salser is CEO of Youth Dynamics. The nonprofit provides therapy and behavioral services for youth and their families at more than 30 locations across the state, both outpatient as well as in eight therapeutic group homes. It's a pretty comprehensive screening that therapists will do. And from that assessment, uh, we make a plan for each and every child and each and every child's plan is different. Cynthia says the plan is working for her family. Therapy has helped her daughter both at home and in school. Is that your coping mechanism? Yes. <laughs> Does it work? Good. Since its beginnings in Montana back in 1981, Youth Dynamics has gone from serving just a handful of youth to a high of 2,700 in 2021. And just like many of the families they serve, they're also facing challenges. It's become harder to find staff since the pandemic, and funding, most of which comes from Medicaid or state-level assistance, is always a worry. The uncertainty of funding has been a challenge for us, knowing you know how to continue to provide the services at the level that they're needed and at the cost that, you know, it costs to deliver services. Services that have led to many success stories like Felicity's. So Felicity, how has it helped you come into Youth Dynamics? Just by helping me with anger and things at school. It's really actually helped me a lot. I don't know how else to put it, but they've really, really helped our family amazing. Keith is joining us now. We're all looking forward to the weekend. How's the weather going to be? Yeah, well, we got a shot here from uh, Joe out by Livingston of Venus and Jupiter. And I guess the question is, will the skies clear tonight to see it again? We'll talk about it after the break. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.